Hey guys, it's Drew with Cooch Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be discussing some type coins that we got in. We just couldn't pass them up. We bought them from a great dealer and we're excited to show them in this video. So let's get this video started. There's one tip that I always talk about with people that are starting out, especially when they're at shows and they're talking to maybe older gentlemen that have been doing it for 15, 20 years, 30 years. Um, their communication, their language sometimes is money. Their, their communication is not, oh, I'm so excited to take a look at your inventory. I'm so excited to uh, you know, talk to you. They're excited to do business. And that may sound like uh, not the best thing to hear, but that's what a lot of guys do, especially at shows. And so what I would recommend for you is that go buy a few coins that you're passionate about from somebody, maybe not even make any money on them. And after a while, you start to get a dialogue and understanding for them as a coin dealer and if you wanna work with them long-term. Many guys, they wanna walk up to a table and get all the deals right now. They don't know the guy, they don't know his uh, business style and then they get offended and then they don't come back to the show. See, these guys, they really love relationships. And I, I feel like sometimes when people walk into shows and they don't get the best deal, they they move on and then they don't come back to that coin dealer's table. But if you are somebody that values the relationship behind the table, which means you value that coin dealer's relationship with you, after a while they'll say, you know, hey, coins come secondary. We're gonna hang out, we're gonna have fun, we're gonna talk, we're gonna go to dinner. We're gonna reach out on a weekly basis, just seeing how they're doing with shows or how they're doing with collections. After a while, when they show you their inventory, that's gonna be the last thing they're thinking about. They're gonna be thinking about, you know, how can we hang out more? How can we spend more time together? How can we learn more from each other? And so what I would say is value the relationship before you value the deal, but also be willing to pay for good coins. You know, you're, you're trying to bless somebody that's your friend. Um, some guys I know that they'll just beat you up over $5. Don't beat a friend up over $5. So there's two things that I wanna talk about. The first thing is that your life moves at the speed of relationships. Anything that has to do with business and it carrying forward has to do with people around you that support you and that want you to grow. If you're not surrounding yourself with people that support you and want you to grow, your business is not gonna move forward. The second thing that I wanna talk about is that learners are earners. People that come into a room expecting to learn, expecting to ask other people questions, those most times are the wealthiest men or women that you're gonna meet. Every time I meet with the people that I talk to, they're asking me about the market, they're asking me about what I've learned this week, they're asking me about what's helped me in my business and our business move forward. If you wanna be an earner, if you wanna be someone that makes money selling coins or doing any other business, you have to be a learner first before you can earn. You have to be someone that wants to equip themselves with as much knowledge as possible before you can go out and make money selling coins or promoting a different business. So use those two things to your advantage. Be a learner and be someone that surrounds themselves with people that want to make you better. See, we all laugh at coin dealers who repeat their whole life story to you at a show. They're talking about when they had kids, when they went to school, when they started their business, all that stuff. But I think it's important that you sit there and you listen to some things that they failed on and some things that they did great at. Because nobody has a perfect story, nobody has a perfect book. But what you can do is that if you're wanting to learn and educate yourself, sometimes it's not only just about coins. It's about how someone carried themselves through their life. What did they do great at and how can I do great in that area? And what did they do bad at and who can I find to help improve myself in that area? You know, a lot of these guys, they might have not the best family structure, or they might not do well with money, or they are guys that are really good at coins, or they're guys with a really great family structure, or they're guys that don't have a great work ethic. But they're also guys in the room that know what they're doing, know how to help you, know how to get you on the right path as someone that wants to be better at coins. And all I do is I say, hey, just tell me more about that, or uh, what can I learn from this and how can it help me improve our life or our business structure? So you need to want to learn from people either in a good way or in the, in the things that they failed at. And that ultimately will help you have a well, more well-rounded life. See, for us, Casey and I, we never really had friends our age. We had friends that were 20 years older, 30 years older, 40 years older. And why is that? It's because most of the time they had such wealth of knowledge of 
their past and what they did good at and what they did bad at, that for us, when we encountered those difficulties in our life, it was much easier easier for us to sit back and say, hey, Bob did that bad and this is how he improved it, or Susie did this good and this is how we can build upon it. And then after a while, when we sit with our peers, they go, hey, Drew, how can we improve our website? How can we improve handling money? How can we improve uh, relationships in a business? All those things we were listening to for so long, and now we're just executing on those things. So surround yourself with people that want to help you succeed. So every week, we dedicate time to reaching out to coin shops all across the United States. Some of the biggest coin outfits that exist out there literally reach out to the same people every week trying to find coins that they just got in or find coins that they got back maybe from a submission, maybe a collection, maybe from CAC. And so what we did was we reached out to some uh, some coin boys out in Alabama. They are, uh, it's called Fully Coin Shop. They're really great guys. We ended up meeting them in a show in Alabama when we drove there. And so we've been trying to check in periodically, trying to find things that maybe that would look good for you guys in your collection. And so they ended up saying, hey, we ended up getting some coins back from NGC. We really don't need them. We, uh, you know, we, we would love for you guys to pick them up and maybe offer them on your website. And so what we did was we ended up buying all these really affordable type coins. They gave us a great price on them all. And these guys are big league. These guys are really good guys. They handle watches. They handle jewelry. They handle coins. They handle estates. So if you guys are in Alabama and you need their help, I'm going to leave their information down below. We're not sponsored by them in any way, but I think they're just a really great group of guys. Um, I want to tell you a little story about them too. So a few months ago, they reached out to us and they're like, hey, would you be interested in like this deal that we bought? And so they ended up showing us a bunch of Charlotte and Dahlonega gold. And it was all in OGH holders. And it was really cool to see stuff like that because... As coin dealers, you don't really get to see a whole lot of cool stuff every single year. Um, you see a lot of, you know, more modern stuff or things that may be a little bit more common. But when you see Charlotte and Dahlonega Gold and OGA shoulders, it's something special. And so, so happy for them and uh, what they're doing over there for the community and what they're doing, uh, you know, in the coin space. Just a really upstanding shop. But let's show you guys these type coins. We're excited to unveil them and give you guys an opportunity to pick them up. We're going to make them live for you today right now when you're watching this video so there's no pre-sales there's no reaching out to us early we want to make sure that you guys have a shot at getting these so we hope you guys enjoy them all right guys so the first coin i want to show you today is this 1873 seated half dollar with no arrows it's from the carson city mint pretty tough coin to find and uh overall it has a decent look to it there's a lot of seated guys out there that are looking for this coin, and it's actually pretty expensive in any grade, and definitely a neat one. Next coin I want to show you is this 1858, three cents silver. It's got this really nice blue and green to the coin. Probably was cleaned very a very long time ago, and then it was kept somewhere where it could tone up nicely like this. Just a pretty fantastic coin. Then we have this key date 1896S Barber Quarter, grade AG3. The obverse looks really, really nice. And the re I think this one's more towards a G4, and the reverse is more towards a fair two. You just see that that rim is just fading away on the coin on the back, but as long as the obverse is really nice, you can see that mint mark on the reverse, you're pretty much fine on those. Then we have this 1923S. Peace dollar, great mint state 62. Nice estimate luster, but these are really tough to find, especially in gem. I think the last few that have sold have been anywhere between $2,500 to $3,000, just because they really didn't make peace dollars with the greatest strikes over at the San Francisco mint, and it really shows, especially with the 25S. Then we have this 1865 three cent nickel. Nice Civil War type coin, AU53, super affordable, and also comes with really great true views. I thought the, the look was really nice to the coin, and it's not bad when you don't have to pay too much for it either. Then we have a San, Fr San Francisco Mint $5 Half Eagle, great AU58, 
just a gorgeous Indian head design. And San Francisco Mint Indians end up doing pretty well for us. We've been trying to get more into these over time, but we've only, I think, owned, I think, three or four over, over the past three years of us doing this. And that one's just a great opportunity for us to show you guys that coin. Then we have two obverse cameo Franklin half dollars. This one's a 67 star, type 2, 1956. You can see that the cameo is really popping up on the Franklin there. And on the reverse, there's no cameo on the bell, so that's why they gave it the star designation. Then we have this 1883 no sense Liberty Vehicle. Redmond State 62. Overall, not too many issues in the fields, but not a lot of these reach a gem, which is kind of unfortunate. Then we have this key date 1934S P Star, graded AU50. Still some remaining luster on the coin, and people are always on the hunt for key date P Stars if they're getting them for their set. This one definitely was worth it for us. To share with you guys, we have this 1834 classic head half cent. It's great AU53 brown. Kind of hard to pick up under this lighting, but really great detail. Love the way that this this coin was designed. No major issues on the coin. Just a really nice chocolatey reverse. And these are all in the newer NGC slabs. They have these QR codes just to authenticate each one because I guess people have been reproducing NGC slabs and they've been making them so good that they weren't actually able to tell the difference only from the coin when they studied it. And so adding that QR code is unique to every single coin and you'll need that QR code and able to authenticate these newer slabs. This is a 1877S, trade dollar graded VF30, mostly original look, just something that you'd love to pick up or find in an old collection. And this one is just, has that even wear, and like I said, that more classic original look. We have this 1846O, tall date, seated half, a rather tougher coin to find, and these actually become very expensive in any grade. But if there's a seated half guy out there that's looking for this date, I think they have small, medium, and large date for this date. So these don't pop up too often for you. Here is an 1890S Morgan Dollar grade AU58. Has two big coin rolls on the obverse face and a little gentle wear on the high points, but Luster's all there for sure, a little bit of a better date, and just a lovely look to it. Then we have this 1878S trade dollar, graded VF35, kind of the same story as the other trade dollar, and uh, I just love the look of these, beautiful. And then we have this 1926D Standing Liberty Quarter. Rather nice looking coin, no distracting spots. Gorgeous luster still intact to this coin. She's just a stunner. Up next is this 1901 Barber Dime. It's graded Mint State 64 by NGC. Has some color to the coin uh, on the obverse right by the date. And when you flip it over, it's got a little bit of that color on the reverse as well. Then we have this other Franklin half dollar. It's got that cameo obverse like we were talking about earlier on the other one. And on the reverse, still a really nice stunning field. And also the details are really nice, but just needed a little bit more cameo to it to make a cameo. And last but not least is this 1892 Barber Quarter with some interesting color on both sides of the coin. Nice luster also. But we hope you guys enjoy our new purchases. So thankful that you guys watched all the way until the end.